Hello, as you guys all know, I'm Nikki Star Killer, and welcome back to my channel. Well, I got some exciting updates. I got my boobs done. Um, so I got them done just about a little over a week ago. Um, yeah. The first two days was horrible. Spain. Couldn't move. Couldn't get off the couch. Couldn't sit up. Couldn't do a lot of things. I'm glad that I had a little bit of help from a, one of my dear friends. So I went into surgery. I went in at around 5.30 a.m. They got me prepped. I ended up getting um, uh, IV into my hand. Um, and that's also where the anesthesiologist was going through, like, nothing was the mask or anything. Everything was liquid. Um, my surgeon came in, and he was full of excitement. He's like, aren't you excited? I'm just like, no. No, let's get this done and over with, essentially. Um, yeah. Was, <laughs> he was just so enthusiastic. Uh, of course, he drew what he needed to draw on me um, to, to follow where he needs to go and stuff. Um, and then around 7.15, the anesthesiologist came in. He's like, oh, hi, Nikki. And he's like, I'm going to give you something that will take the edge off of you. I was like, okay. And he's like, um, I was like, I'm not going to go to sleep right now, am I? He's like, no. He's like, when you get in the operating room and they're ready to go, then I'll put you under. Okay, great. So they're rolling me down the hall. I was out. Uh, I woke up. I couldn't move. I'm in, like, the waiting room. And I basically just scream out, like, Help! Like, I just didn't know what to do. And they came over, and they're like, they gave me some water, and I was trying to drink the water. Couldn't really drink the water. I was just extremely thirsty. And maybe I was in there for like five more minutes after I woke up, and they wheeled me back to my room, and I'm still like out of it. And I'm just then the lady's like, "Okay, you gotta get dressed now." And I'm like, "I can't even get up." She's like, "Well, I'll help you up, and we're gonna get you." My ride has already come, and they're like, we already called your ride, they're here, ready to sign you out, and I'm just like, so she gives me this can of Coke soda, and she's like, drink this, you need some caffeine, so I drank it, and threw the straw, and I'm putting on my sweatpants, and put on a t-shirt, oh, if you ever do get this, do not wear jeans, no, I brought sweatpants, and a t-shirt, and a hoodie, fit, you know, um, yeah, you, you don't want a lot of stuff to really try to finagle getting on. And, um, so yeah, I put on my sweatpants, put on my t-shirt, put on my hoodie. They put me into a wheelchair and they signed, I got signed out. My friend helped me out in the car, had to get me in the car. Then I had to get out of the car. And I will have to walk upstairs outside to my apartment. Like, as soon as I got to my apartment, I, um, basically just, like, he put me on the couch and kept me there, and, you know, I had snacks, I had soda, I had, or not soda, I had, uh, drinks and stuff, like Gatorades and stuff, and I had snacks, and I was all right. So that's, uh, like, 11 o'clock, and he, my friend comes back around 7, I needed help off the couch, because I couldn't do it, um, Needed to go to the bathroom, come back to the couch. And then he he left and the next day, the next morning was just absolutely horrible. Well, probably due to the fact that I actually got off the couch that night. I actually got off the couch at like 2 o'clock in the morning. It took me like a half hour to get off the couch. And I just wanted to go to my bed. Wrong move. My bed is extremely soft. Mattress is soft. It's not a firm mattress. So I fell asleep in that and I woke up and I couldn't move again. It was 8.30. 
I called my friend and I'm like, I'm in extremely extreme pain. My doctor ended up giving me like Percocets. Even though like for me, if you guys know like control substances, I can't really take them. You know, I used to be addicted to them and stuff. And I was, I called up my friend and I'm like, it's 8.30, I was like, we need a pharmacy. And I was like, I need those. He's like, oh, really? So we ended up, he ended up coming over. I had to get me out of my bed because I was stuck in my bed because I couldn't get off of it because it was just so soft and I couldn't move. My legs were just extremely, like, gone. My calves were, like, on fire and I just couldn't use them. And so he comes over. We stop at the drugstore, drop it off. I go get my car and he's like, you can drive your car? Like, yeah, I'm fine driving my car. I was like, I'm going to need help in and out of it. You know, but it's an automatic. I can drive fine. I'm I'm in pain, but I'm not, like, delusional or anything. But I'm like, I can drive fine. So we ended up driving back to the drugstore. He followed me. Went inside, got the pills. Uh, I got, like, 18 of them, I think. Um, got him a sandwich. Came back. Helped me back in my car. Drove my car back to my place. He followed me again. Got me out of my car, got me upstairs, got me up here, and like as soon as I got in here, I took one. So that's uh, 11.30 or 12 o'clock, I took one. Um, proceeded to go to sleep, fell asleep on the couch, woke up at like 5, felt a little bit better. Um, 6, 7 o'clock, I took one more. And I doing much better, feeling much better, well, pain wise. Um, and you know, that's when I started to really start to recuperate, I guess you could say. Slept again, stayed on the couch, didn't go back in my bedroom. Yeah, and then things started to get a little bit better. Um, Sunday, I actually like walked out to my car went driving went and got some food came back you know i was able to get out of my car and slowly and surely you know i was able to do stuff and yeah uh, <laughs> that's uh i ended up taking one more on monday 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 afternoon um, because it was just, I guess I did too much, uh, still the walking and stuff, the pain. So I, I took one more and then I had the, Tuesday morning I had the, I had to go see my psychiatrist and then the way the psychiatrist, I stopped at the drugstore and I gave him the rest of the Percocets. And I'm like, I, you know, it's like, I used three, you guys can get rid of them. I didn't want to throw them out of my dumpster because people go dumpster diving around here. And I was just like, just get rid of these because I can't have them at my house. So I went to therapist, saw him, and came back. Um, Thursday, I ended up getting my stitches taken out, which was nice. Doctor apparently enthusiastic again. He's, you know, I go in, nurse is like, okay, you got to take off your shirt, put on this thing, okay. She comes back. She's like, okay, let's take off the bandages. She goes, oh, wow, they, they look really good. I was like, thanks. So, doctor comes in, like, of course, again. He's like, opens my shirt. He's like, man, that was really good. I was like, yeah, they look really, really, really good. I, I like them. He's like, are you sure you like them? I was like, yeah, you, I was like, you did a really good job. He's like, okay, good. He's like, you hurting? He's like, yeah, I was like, yeah, so generally where the pain is for me is like right here. Um, my cuts are underneath here. I went underneath the boobs, not into my armpits. But like even now, like they just don't hurt, which is nice. But what hurts is that my skin is, is literally like stretched. And like because he moved the implant in, you know, um... It just 
you know, this is where the pain essentially extends from, is right here. And everything else is really tender. Actually, so like one of the things my doctor told me is that I actually have to massage my boobs. Okay, <laughs> it's not so bad. Uh, taking care of the, I'm starting to take care of the wound, so that's good. I want to try to minimize the scarring, you know, because there is a cut there and I want to, you know, try to minimize the scarring. But, I mean, there's other procedures like if I end up needing to, I could get laser on the scars to reduce them even more. But rather not go down that route, it's just like take care of them now while I can. Other than that, like I still have like pains, like I ended up cleaning my apartment because you know I was living in here and it was kind of a, like a mess. Wash dishes and like cook food. It's so hard. Like I just can't. I can't do the things that I was able to do before. Like and we're, I'm off now from work for almost a month. Because it's like I just can't do certain things. I, you know, I'm not allowed to lift. I'm not allowed to push. I'm not allowed to pull. You know, and that's fine. You know, that's all part of, you know, part of the routine. I guess you could say. So, yeah. Am I happy I got it done? Yeah, I. I feel like that I. Like now, when I look in the mirror. I see more of myself. They're not like extravagant and they look more natural. You know, I've seen a lot of boobs. <laughs> but, um, you know, they just, they look, when I look in the mirror, I actually see more. I feel much better than like before, like looking at my body, you know. And, you know, that's, that's, that's essentially a lot of what, you know, gender dysphoria is, it's the body that you are in, you know, like, as a man, you know, I just, you know, it's always, it's always something there, and now it's like, now it's like I'm just trying to more complete. Will I end up doing other surgeries? I don't know. Um, this was basically um, a check mark off a list that's either not finished or maybe is finished you know this might be the last thing i get done i don't know it might not be um but i mean there is other stuff that i kind of want to do maybe i'm gonna f obviously further look into the stuff and see like is it gonna help me out you know um financially I'm glad that I have really good insurance that like pays helps pays for a lot of it, you know. I mean, so it's not bad, but it's like I'm glad that I have these options to be able to, you know, hey, look into this, look into this, look into this. But ultimately, it's ultimately it is my decision, you know, like what I want to do, what I don't want to do. Um. If I never get the bottom surgery, is that going to make me less of a woman? No. You know, I am Nikki. I am a woman. I am a transgender woman. Who was just born a biological male, you know? I have gender dysphoria. And I take hormones to deal with it. And, you know, I got a surgery to help deal with it a little bit more. You know, and I feel a lot better. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to take some time getting used to, like, being able, hopefully going back to work, you know, and, you know, living my life. Um, now I got to change some clothes around, <laughs> you know. Oh, well, that, that's, you know, it's all part of life, I guess you could say. So, am I happy? Yeah, I'm much more happier. The more happier I am, the better off I am. And I'm getting, I seem to be getting happier and happier every day. And I, I thoroughly enjoy this journey that I'm going on. You know, and living your true self.
people are like, it's so hard. No, it's not. I live my true self every day. My strong for it? No. It's really easy to live your true self. You know? I'm happy. And I'm glad I did the surgery. You know? Anyways, thanks for enjoying this video. As you guys all know, I'm Nikki Starkiller. You can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook, all at Nikki Starkiller. And as always, 